welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. And tonight, we are pleased to bring you our 600th episode special. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Give us a call, 208 991 and uh, become one of our friends over on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, we're going to uh, present a few things we need to introduce, and that is Glenn Ford, Studio One, and tonight's play, The 39 Steps. Uh, Glenn Ford was a very successful actor. He began his career in 1939, and it would continue until 1991. This particular radio play was from uh, March 23rd of 1948. So he was still in the early part of his career, which had been interrupted for two years of service in World War II. Studio One had been begun the previous year uh, by CBS with the goal of showcasing an hour uh, adaptation of some of the world's best plays and novels, with some of these tending to be uh, a bit controversial. Studio One would leave the air as when CBS acquired the rights to airing the Ford Theater with a very nice uh, sponsor in the Ford Motor Company. uh, Studio One would, however, become a very prominent name in television and one of the most successful and well-beloved of the 1950s live TV anthologies sponsored by the Westinghouse Corporation. 39 Steps is uh, the template. It's one of the earliest stories of a type that we're all uh, very well used to by now. If we've seen uh, movies such as North by Northwest, Man on the Run, falsely accused, with intrigue and mystery uh, surrounding him. 39 Steps has been adapted numerous times for radio, television, and uh, the stage as well as motion pictures. The most famous adaptation uh, was Alfred Alfred Hitchcock's 1935 adaptation, and it's been uh, adapted numerous times over the radio. The first time was actually by Orson Welles on the Mercury Theater. We will eventually play that version, because that version stayed closer to the uh, novel than the Hitchcock film, or this, uh, or this uh, radio version, which uh, t- seems to track pretty closely to uh, the, the way that Hitchcock uh, did it as opposed to the original novel. We're going to hear some interesting voices, including one of the actors who uh, usually plays a lead role in one of our detective series. We'll talk a little bit more about the story once we get back. But now from CBS and Studio One, from March 23rd of 1948, here now as our 600th episode special is The 39 Steps, starring Glenn Ford. Tonight, Mr. Glenn Ford stars in The 39 Steps, from Studio One at CBS. You're a woman, and you're defenseless, and you're alone on the desolate moor in the dark, handcuffed to a murderer who'd stop at nothing to get you off his hands. If that's a situation you enjoy, my lovely, have it and welcome. We invite you to Studio One, radio's celebrated playhouse of dramatic entertainment featuring the world's great stories, novels, and plays in special versions for listening. And now to introduce tonight's great story, here is the director of Studio One, Fletcher Markle. Tonight we present you with a tall and shamelessly exciting story by that wizard among authors of mystery adventure, the late John Buchan. With the 39 steps, we offer you spies and secrets and high doings in England and Scotland. Romantic interests aren't going to be neglected either. There are at least two mysterious ladies to be heard from, whose charm is equaled only by the trouble in which they get themselves and a certain young man involved. In our story, that young man is a personable Canadian named Richard Hanney. And tonight we have with us in Studio One another personable and very talented Canadian to bring Richard Hanney to life for you. 
Mr. Glenn Ford. With Mr. Ford, you'll be hearing Kathleen Cordell as Pamela, Mercedes McCambridge as Annabella, and Miriam Wolfe as Annie, with Everett Sloan and John Stanley contributing the largest share of many villainies. The 39 Steps by John Buchan. Please to begin. <laughs> seat taken? No. no. I don't think so. Well, would you mind moving your coat? Oh, I'm sorry. That's quite all right. There you are. Thanks. Ah, she was rather good, wasn't she? I beg your pardon? I said she was rather good. Oh, yes, she was. Was that the first turn? No, no, that must have been the third or fourth. Oh, and I understand that this is the best music hall in London. Yes, it is. Haven't you ever been here before? No, I just arrived from Canada a few days ago. Uh-huh. You know, I don't usually like music hall entertainment. Please but... be quiet. I want to hear the next one. Oh, I beg your pardon. Ladies and gentlemen, with your kind attention and permission, I have the honor of presenting to you one of the most remarkable men in the world. Every day he commits to memory 50 new facts and remembers every one of them. Facts from history, facts from geography, facts from newspapers... From scientific books, millions and millions of them. Think of the strain involved by his prodigious feet. His feet ain't as big as yours, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm repelling to his feats of memory. Uh, Attention, ladies and gentlemen. Ask him your questions and he'll answer fully and freely. Mr. Memory. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. A question, please. Ladies first. Where's the old man, Vincent Clark? On the booth! Out with a good looker! Uh, a serious question, please. What won the Derby in 1921? Mr. Jack Jones, humorist with Steve Donahue up. Won by a length of six to one, second and third, Craig and Erin, and Lemonora. Am I right, sir? Right! Who was the last British heavyweight champion of the world? My old woman! <laughs> it was Bob Fitzsimmons. He defeated Jim Corbett, heavyweight champion of America, at Carson City, Nevada, in October 1897. He was then 34 years of age. Am I right, sir? Right! You know, I think I'm going to ask him a question. Why tell me about it? Another question, please. How far is Winnipeg from Montreal? Ah, a gentleman from Canada. You're welcome here, sir. (laughs) Winnipeg, the third city of Canada and capital of the province of Manitoba. Distance from Montreal, 1,424 miles. Am I right, sir? Quite right. I've got to get out of here. Come on, I'll help you. Please, please, I've got to get out. Come on, take my hand. Will you get out of my way? Take my hand and let me clear the way for you. Thank you. Out of the way, coming through. Give us room. Coming through, lady coming through. There's the door. Hurry, hurry, please. Coming through. Hey, who do you think you're shoving? You, lady coming through. There we are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. I wanted to get out myself. May I come home with you? Uh, uh, Did my ears deceive me, or did you say, may I come home with you? Yes, please. That sounds like a very excellent idea, but what is the idea? Don't ask questions. Just take me home. I'll tell you when we get there. Well, if that's what you want, come on. There's a bus. Well, here you are. I'll turn on the light. Not yet. What? What's the matter? Here. Let me turn this chair. No. You can turn on the light. What's this all about? Would you mind turning that mirror face to the wall? Afraid somebody outside might see you? Exactly. (laughs) Oh, no. You know, I I haven't that bad a reputation. I'm not worried about your reputation. (laughs) Please. Oh, no. (laughs) All right. All right, you know, you don't have to go out looking for adventure. No, you carry it with you like a child playing alone. Oh, by the way, my name is Henny. Am I allowed to know yours? Smith. Hmm? Oh. Yes, all right. Yeah, I'll take your coat. Thank you. You want to know more about me? What do you think I do for a living? Actress. Not in the way you mean. 
Mm. Chorus. Uh, no. Sorry. Out for adventure? That's right. That's interesting. Don't answer that telephone. Why not? Because I think it's for me. Well, now listen now. Please don't answer. All right. I'll string along. Guess I owe you an explanation. Well, I was hoping we'd get around to that. I suppose your name isn't really Smith. It depends on where I am. You may call me Annabella. Oh, Annabella Smith. A clergyman's daughter, I suppose. Hey, what makes you so nervous? Bothered by the shot in the theater? That shot was fired at me. There were two men in that theater who wanted to kill me. Oh, now, you really should be more careful about choosing your gentleman friends. No, no, you don't understand. Well, you don't make it very easy for me now, do you? A beautiful and mysterious woman pursued by gunmen? Sounds like a spy story. That's exactly what it is. You're a spy? I prefer the word agent. Oh. For what country? For any country that pays me. I suppose you've come here to dig up some great big state secret. No, no. As a matter of fact, I'm here to save a secret from being dug up. A very important secret of this country, not because I love England, but because it will pay me better that way. Thank you, on behalf of the British Empire. But this is serious. A very clever agent of a certain foreign power is on the point of obtaining a secret vital to your air ministry. I tracked two of his men to that music hall. Unfortunately, they recognized me. That's why they're after me now. Have you ever heard of a thing called um, persecution mania? You don't believe me? Frankly, I don't. Go and look down into the street, then. What? Go to the window. Look down into the street. You will probably see two men lounging around opposite the entrance to this building. Well, all right. I'll take a look. Might as well give you a chance to prove your preposterous theory. Oh. You win. They're there? Yes, they're there. I'd hoped I'd shaken them off. I'm going to tell you something which isn't very healthy for you to know. But now that they've followed me here, you're in this just as much as I am. How do you mean? Have you ever heard of the 39 Steps? What's that, a pub? Never mind. The important thing is that a state secret will be taken from this country... Unless I stop those men. Well, why don't you phone the police because or something? Because they wouldn't believe me any more than you did. And if they did, how long do you think it would take them to get going? Oh, no, these men act quickly. And you don't know how clever their chief is. He's clever and ruthless. Well, who is he? What's his name? He has a dozen names, and he can look like a hundred people. But there's one thing he can't disguise. Part of his little finger on the left hand is missing... And if ever you should meet such a man, be very careful, my friend. I'll remember. Meanwhile, what are you going to do? May I stay here? Well, you're welcome to my bed here. I'll catch a nap on the couch. Thank you. Now, see here, I'm going to lock you in the bedroom. No, there's no need of that. Oh, yes. After all, if your story is true, your safety is pretty important to England. I'm going to lock you in the bedroom. Then if those men force their way into the apartment, they'll have to deal with me and they won't be able to get you. Thank you, Mr. Handy. And I'm very tired. Do you think it would be all right if I went to the bedroom now? Don't get up. Stay in that chair till I switch off the lights. <laughs> You've certainly changed since you came in here, Mr. Hanny. <laughs> Bella. Mr. Oh, you're hurt here. Let me help you to the bed. No. There's no time. Just hold me. They, they came in by the window. They couldn't open the door to get to you. But your neck. Now, see here. Stop talking. You're too weak to talk. Oh, no. Listen. Hold me. I must tell you. A man in Scotland. In Altnashalik. Alt. 
Now, Charlie, go to him and tell him... That... Who is he? What's his name? His... His name, his name, Annabella. His name? Hello? Mr. Henny. Yes? Is Annabella dead? Who is this? Never mind. Is Annabella dead? Yes, you did your work well. But you won't get away with it. Have you called the police? You and I both know that the police would only arrest me. <laughs> yes. But I'd advise you to call them. If you come out without the police, we will kill you, Henny. <laughs> Who's that? You the milkman? I am. Well, you're a bright and early for such a fine gentleman. Could you use a pound note? What's the catch? Well, I want to borrow your cap and coat. I want to dress myself up like a milkman. What's the big idea? Well, I want to make a getaway. Ah, do a bunk? Uh, yes, yes. I say, what have you been up to? I, well, I, I'll have to trust you. There's been a murder committed on the first floor. By you? No, no. Did you see two men hanging around across the street? Yes. They committed the murder. Oh, I see. Now I suppose they're waiting there as good as gold for a copper to come and arrest them. Yes, it's quite true. They're spies. They've murdered a woman in my flat, and now they're waiting for me. Ah, oh, come off it. Funny jokes at five in the morning. But I... Well, uh, all right. All right, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, are you married? Yes, but don't rub it in. Well, I'm I'm not married. I'm, um, I'm a bachelor. Well, congratulations. Yeah. There's a woman living here on the first floor. Is there now? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. I paid her a call last night, and I've been wanting to go home since midnight. Well, what's preventing you? Those men. They're her uh, brothers. Now, do you see? <laughs> oh, God. Why didn't you tell me before, old fellow? I only wanted to be told. Trying to kid me with a lot of talk about murders and spies. Here, put this on. Put on my little hat. There you are. Here, take the pound. Well, thank you, Gabner. Here's my bottle. Just leave my pony and cart around the corner. So long, old sport. Thanks again. Roger. Last ticket to Aberdeen, Scotland, please. How do you do? Well, good day, sir. The conductor tells me this is my compartment. Is the room? Of course. Sit down. Thank you. Mm. Uh, are you a traveling man? Mm, no, no. I am. I travel in women's underwear. You interested? Oh, always. <laughs> I've got a new course at time setting this trip. The streamline. You know, I can never understand how people put up with the old-fashioned sort. All bones and no beds. Not mine. <laughs> put a pretty girl inside of mine, sir, and she needn't be ashamed anywhere. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I say, I, I must be boring you. Yes. Yeah, I guess I'll look at the paper. No, no, you're not boring me. Hmm. hmm. I say there's been another woman murdered in a West End flat. What? Woman murdered in a West End flat. Uh, Portland Mansions in Portland Place. Oh, yes, I know what that is. Uh, um, a well-dressed woman of about 30 with a knife in her back. The tenant, Richard Hanney, is missing. Ha! Missing. <laughs> he did it all right. What do the police say? Uh, the police theory is that... Uh... Oh, well, if that isn't the blasted limit... What is? 
Is there no honesty in this world at all? Now, look here, sir. Look at this advertisement. Now, I ask you. The new body line rubber panty corset on sale today at McPherson Brothers, 17 and 9 pence. Why, why, they're underselling us. Uh, do the police say who did it? Brazier to match 4 and 11 pence. Yes. Yes, that's too bad. But what about that murder you were telling me about? Blast the murder, sir. I've got to look through this paper and all the other ads. Now, let me see now. Yeah, what is this? Where could I get a paper? Well, we're coming into a station. Why don't you get off and buy one? Yes, I'll do that. Pardon me. Oh, pardon me, conductor, but have I time? What is it, sir? I, w- I was wondering if I have time. Conductor. To... Conductor. Yes, sir? I'm from the police. As soon as the train starts again, I'll want to search every compartment. Oh? Yes, we're after a man named Richard Hanney, a West End murderer. Right, sir. Now, what was it you wanted, sir? Oh, never mind. The train's starting. It's too late now. Oh. Oh, pardon me. May may I come in? Well, I'm sure there are other compartments not in use. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to make use of this one. And you. I beg your pardon? Look, I'm desperate. The police are looking for me, but I'm innocent. When they come into this compartment, you take your cue from me. You do exactly as I want you to. I shall hand you over. That's what I shall do. You do, and I'll... Well, you'll die one second later. Uh, Darling, Uh, darling, of course I love you. Of course I love you, darling. Kiss me, darling. Oh, guess there's no murder in here. You, you... I'm terribly sorry. I'm sorry I had to do it. Now, look here. My name is Hanny. They're after me. But I swear I'm innocent. You've got to help me. I've got to keep free for the next few days. All right, I don't blame you for slapping me, but please listen. You're despicable. You've got to let me stay here. It isn't just for my sake. Uh, Big pardon, you two. What is it, officer? I'm sorry to disturb you again, but have either of you seen a man come by here the past few minutes? This is the man you want, I think. What? She's joking. But when I looked in just a moment ago... He marched his way in here and forced me to kiss him. Told me his name is Hanny. Oh... Is your name Henny? No. It is. He just told me so. He said he's wanted for murder. I told you I was innocent too, didn't I? Why do you leave that out? Your name is Henny, then. Of course it is. You're under arrest, Mr. Henny. And it's my duty to warn you that anything you say may be used against you. Officer, may I smoke? Go ahead. Want one? No, thanks. You know I'm innocent. I don't know anything of the sort. No? Well, you seem to trust me. Do I? Yes. Yes, you haven't handcuffed me. If I handcuffed you, then I'd be handcuffed too, and I hate handcuffs. Oh, well, that's quite understandable. You couldn't do anything anyway. The door's locked. Oh, that's quite true. What did you kill her for? I didn't kill her. Oh, come off it. This ain't official. I'm just curious. Why do you think I killed her? Oh, well, because you're in love with her. Oh, that's a strange reason for killing a girl. Oh, maybe she was in love with you and you couldn't get rid of her. That's it. That's it? Oh, I thought so. Yes, yes, she was always, always pestering me. Wanted me to kiss her all the time. Tell her I loved her. You know how it is. No, I know. Right. Yeah, well, I, you know, I couldn't even eat a meal in peace. I couldn't take her to the theater unless we sat way in the back row. You know, really, she, she was always getting me to take her to the zoo. Now, do you realize how many lonely places there are at the zoo where a woman can trap a man? You don't mean it. Yes. Fact is, remember, and the night I murdered her, it was... Well, I'll tell you, that was just the last straw. What happened? She came to my apartment. I I didn't expect her, you understand. I wanted to be alone with my chest set. But she came in. When I heard what she wanted, I couldn't stand it anymore. Everything went red before me. I was blind. I was blind with rage. Good heavens, what did she want? She wanted me to take her to the zoo again. See here, are you trying to pull my leg? Of course I am. I told you I didn't murder her. (sighs) I'll give up. Oh, are, are we... Coming to a station? No, no. Just slowing down for the bridge. Huh? Hmm. Sure you won't join me in a cigarette? Oh, I might as well. Here you are. Oh, thanks. Hey, let go. So long. Hey, don't jump out there. You'll get killed. Don't jump. Oh, 
Hold your fire, you fool. Oh, it's He's undercover. Sonny is a smart man. Probably crawling from one bush to another on the side of the hill. Well, I was only trying to shoot when I last seen him, Well, sir. don't do it. I wish those other fools had stopped shooting, too. He's bound to come out in another place. Well, still an old so I don't see him. Wait a moment. There he is. Where? No, wait a moment. Don't shoot. You see, he's up on the brow of the hill. Out of rifle range. We'd risk it after him. No, no, wait a moment. Look. You see? There, he's gone. Down the other side of the hill. We'd risk it after him. That's what I'd say. No, 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 wait. I have a better plan. We'd never catch him that way. He's got too big a lead, and besides, he'll go down the hill on the other side a lot faster than we can never go up on this side. But what are we to do? We're going to count on the fact that he's a human being. He'll get tired. He'll get hungry. He's been running around all day, and he, he hasn't eaten since before he got on that train. He's going to have to sleep somewhere tonight. That's when we'll catch him. How, oh, sir? You go round up the others. We're going to stop in at every farmhouse and every barn in the whole countryside tonight. Hey. Good day, sir. Could you direct me to Alton Shalik? Aye, straight along the road and cross the lock. Thank you. Are you looking for work? Uh, y- yes, yes, I'm a chauffeur. You'll find the work in Elton, shall I? Oh, no big houses around here? Only Sir Andrews, and he won't be wanting you. He's had the same chauffeur for 40 years. No, oh, I see. Uh, are there no newcomers around? Aye, there's an Englishman, a kind of professor. Professor? Aye, he lives at Elton, shall I? Oh, thanks, I'll try that. You'll not try tonight. It's 14 miles. Hmm. Well, uh, could you put me up for the night? Three. No, 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 I'll pay. Aye, right, then. Can you eat the herring? <laughs> I could eat half a dozen right now. Can you sleep in a box bed? I can try. Two and six. Take it now. Thank you. Come in. Thank you. Woman! Hi. What is it? This gentleman will stay with us till the morning. Go make up the box bed. Very well. Your daughter? My wife. Oh. You'd best go in with her and see your room. Yes, I'll do that. Thank you. Hello. Hello. This is your bed. Could you sleep there, do you think? You try and stop me. (laughs) You'd be tired. (laughs) Oh, I'll say I am. Won't you sit down, please, while I make up the bed? Thank you. You have been in these parts long? No, I'm from Glasgow. Do you ever see it? No, no. Ah, you should see Sucky Hall Street with all its fine shops and Argyle Street on Saturday night with the trams and the lights and, and the cinema palaces and the crowds. Oh. Ay, and it's Saturday night tonight. You'd like to be there? I. You certainly don't get all those things out here. <laughs> no. Do you always miss them? Hmm? Or just on Saturday nights? I... Uh... <sighs> I don't like to say. Well, now, I've never been to Glasgow, but I've been in Edinburgh, Montreal, and London. I'll tell you all about London at supper. My husband wouldn't approve of that, I doubt. Why not? Oh, he says it's best not to think of such places and all the wickedness that goes on there. Then why not listen now? What do you want to know? Well... Is it true that all the ladies paint their toenails? <laughs> Some of them. And the London ladies look beautiful? Oh, they do. Yes, they do. Oh, but they wouldn't if you were beside them. Oh, you ought not to say that. What ought you not to say? Oh. I was just saying to your wife that I prefer living in the town rather than the country. Uh, God made the country. Come, woman. Get supper for us. <laughs> No, thank you. I'm... Oh, I've been extremely well fed. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you want to look at the weekly, weekly paper? It just came today. Yes, I'd like to very much. Thank you. You best look at it right away. I want it when I come back. I'm going to water the cattle. Woman, get the dishes done. You here? Hi, John. Wouldn't you care to look at the paper? Oh, no, thank you. I read it this afternoon. Indeed. I'm surprised. 
Does your husband allow you to read the paper? I... I'd best clear the table. Uh, you hadn't told me your name, sir. Oh, Han... Hammond. It wouldn't be honey, would it? What made you think that? You're greatly interested in that murder in London. You looked almost greedy reading about it. And, and you fit the description of the murderer. What makes you think that he's a murderer? What makes you think that he's guilty? Is he not? No. I want to believe that. It's true. Ah, the poor man. Everybody chasing him now. Everybody against him. If he did not commit the murder... He didn't. He needs a friend. Yes. Yes, he needs someone who knows what it is to be friendless. Someone who has warm human sympathy because she has suffered herself. Because she has needed warmth and sympathy herself. I know too well what you mean, Mr. Honey. Hammond. Excuse me, Hammond. This man they're looking for. You know, I imagine the police are combing the Scottish moors for him. I imagine they're knocking on the door of every house and asking the people if they've seen this man. Why, it would be lucky for him if someone misdirected them. Yes. Someone who has sympathy. Someone who has received sympathy from him. <laughs> We're a full 15 minutes late to bed tonight. We are that. Uh, we've earned twice the money that beggar paid us. Him eating, reading our paper and keeping us up. Oh, he was no bother, John. Was he? No. You took a fine fancy to that lady buck woman. Oh, no, John. Yes, woman, I know when you're thinking sinful thoughts. And I know a sinful man when I lay my eyes on him. Please, John, what you're saying isn't true. Are you coming to bed now? In a minute. Why do you keep watching out the window? Oh, uh, no reason. Just thinking your sinful thoughts, No, eh? John. Well, then blow out the candle. Come to bed. Aye, John. <laughs> Mr. Honey, wake up. What? what is it? What is the it? car's coming. That'll be the police. You'd best be going. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hurry up and don't let them catch I'm you. I'm ready. I'm ready. I slept in my clothes. I'll never forget you for doing this. And which way do I go? Here, I'll show you. Hey, making love behind my back. John! I might have known. Get out, woman. Just a minute. Yes, and you, sir. Get out of my house, Capone. I go, go. And leave you like this? It's your chance of liberty. Get out, both of you. You don't understand. Now, look here. You're all wrong about this. She was trying to help me. Aye, to bring shame and disgrace upon the house. She was trying to help me escape from the police. The police? Yes, the police. They're after me for murder. What? Now they're here. She only came to warn me. I, I told her about it this evening. Don't let them in, please. Say that I'm not here. I'll make it worth your while. How much? Five pounds. You got that much? Yes, yes. Give it to me. After they've gone. Give it to me, no, or I'll turn you over to them. Right, here it is. All right. Get back into the bed. Shut him in, woman. Hide him. Do not get into bed. I do not trust him. But he took the money. I could not resist it. Here, let's open the window and listen. Shh. The Portland Place murder. Uh, how should I know what of a murder? You didn't see anybody go by him. Well, no, I might, but I might not. Uh, is there a reward? Hardly there is, yes. That's right. He's asking if there's a reward for well, you if you uh, get catched. How much is it? Oh, blast him. Two hundred pounds. He'll argue a bit before he lets him in. Uh, that's little enough for catching a murderer. Right? Now's your time. All right, show me the way. Here. Oh, your jacket's terrible light-colored. I'm afraid they'll see you. Here, you'd best take this black one. Is this your husband's coat? Aye, uh, his best Sunday coat. But never mind. They mustn't see you. But what will happen to you? Well, I, I, I'll say I couldn't stop you. He'll not ill-treat you. Oh, he'll pray at me now no more. Go now. What's your name? Annie. Goodbye, Annie. Bless you all the days of your life for this. Dogs will get him, sir. They've got his scent. Yes, I know, but they're going to lose it. 
This Hanny is no fool. He'll go into the lock. Then what good will the dogs be? That farmer said Hanny was inquiring about the professor out in the cellar. Well, if we lose him, we'll go straight to the professor's cottage. How do you do? You're the professor. Yes? Let me in quick. I don't believe I will. Who are you? You wouldn't know my name, but I come from Annabella Smith. Oh. Come in. Thank you. Have a chair. Thank you. Well, sir, what about our mutual friend, Annabella Smith? She's been murdered. Murdered? I'm so sorry, but then in our line of work... Tell me about it. Haven't you read the Portland Mansions affair? So that was Annabella. And the man? I was the man. Excuse me, someone at the door. Someone not so impetuous as to pound as you did. I suggest that you sit quietly in the far corner so that you'll not be seen from the door. Ready? Yes. Gentlemen? We're the police. Have you seen any strangers about this morning? This morning? No. You haven't seen any suspicious-looking bodies? No. No one called at the house? No. No one looking for a job? No one at all. Oh, get rid of them. Get Very rid of good, them. Sir. We're looking for a murderer. We thought he might come here. He mentioned your place, said he might look for a job here. Then if he's a very wise murderer, he won't come near my house. I'll let you know if he does. Thank you, sir. Good day. Well, Mr. Hannay, I suppose I can call you by your right name now. I think the police will bother you no longer. I'm, I want to thank you very much, sir. Not at all. Now... Tell me more about Annabella. Why did she send you to me? I wasn't even sure it was you. I just knew that it was somebody in Alton Shalik. She was coming here about some air ministry secret. She said it would be smuggled out of the country unless we could see someone in Alton Shalik first. Some foreign agent is going to take the secret out of the country unless we can stop him. Did she tell you what the foreign agent looked like? No, no, no. She... Oh, yes, yes. There was one thing. Part of his little finger is missing. Which one? Oh, I, she, I believe she said it was his right hand. Are you sure it isn't the left hand? No, I'm not sure. I... Why do you ask? Because it is the left hand. You see? You? Yes, Mr. Hannay. Ah, I'm afraid I've been guilty of leading you down the garden path. Or is it up? I never can remember. Why didn't you turn me over to the police? Because you would tell your story. They wouldn't believe it, I suppose, but they might check it. They might, they just might find that you were telling the truth. That would be uh, very embarrassing to me. What are you going to do with me? That's just the point. What am I going to do with you? <laughs> You're an engaging fellow, Mr. Hannay. I'd hate to hurt you, but... You see, I'm just about to convey some very vital information out of the country. Then Annabella was right. Oh, yes. Annabella was an excellent secret agent. I often tried to get her to work with me, but she wanted too much money. <laughs> well, that's neither here nor there. The question is still, what am I going to do with you? And I'm afraid I know the answer. All right, let's have it. I don't think this revolver could be traced to me. You're going to shoot me? I'm afraid there's no alternative, Mr. Hannay. All right. Don't move. What a pity. He was such a young man. From Studio One, radio celebrated playhouse of dramatic entertainment, you are hearing Glenn Ford starring in The 39 Steps, 
A version for listening by Robert Senadella of the John Buchan novel. Studio One will resume after the customary pause for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. From Studio One, we continue tonight's full-hour dramatic entertainment. Mr. Glenn Ford stars in Fletcher Markle's production of The 39 Steps. Woman, I cannot find my hymn book. Your hymn book? Where did you leave it? In the breast pocket of my overcoat. It was hanging here. Oh, John, I... I'm afraid I gave your coat to that gentleman who was staying here that night. That murderer? <coughs> you little fool! Cigarette cases, yes, Sheriff, but I've never seen it happen to a hymn book before. I've never encountered such a peculiar set of events in all my years as Sheriff of Alton Oh, that's not surprising, you know. The bullet this professor fired stuck in the hymn book, eh? Yes. Well, I'm not surprised, Mr. Hanny. Some of these hymns are terrible hard to get through. I've stuck at them myself before now. Hymns that have helped me, eh? <laughs> that's a good one, Mr. Hanny, that's fine. And to think that I've had drinks with that professor, accepted his hospitality. Well, it's a lesson to us all. And how did you escape? Well, of course, he thought I was dead. And while I was still unconscious, he dragged me into the dressing room. When I came to, I got out of the window and came here. Now, Sheriff, I don't want to hurry you or anything, but oughtn't you to be taking some sort of action? This is serious, you know. I know. Well, I mean, if it weren't, I'd never put myself in your hands with a murder charge hanging over me. Never heed the murder, Mr. Hanney. I don't doubt you'll be able to convince Scotland Yard of your innocence of, as you've convinced me. I've sent for someone at the police station next door to come and take your statement down. Thank you. Where are you wishing to see me, Sheriff? Yes, indeed I was. Do you think I enjoy playing for time with a murderer? Murderer? Certainly. Hanny, you're under arrest on charge of willful murder of a woman unknown in Portland Mansions, London, Tuesday last. Inspector... Take him over to the county jail. Aye. But, Sheriff, you heard my story. You believed it. Come along now. It's true, every word of it. Honey, we're not so daft in Scotland as smart Londoners may think. Do you think I believed your cock and bull story about the professor? Where's my best friend? But if the professor didn't shoot me, where did that bullet come from? That's easy. From one of your pursuers on the moor. Isn't that so, Inspector? I thought so, sir. I had a shot at him myself. I demand that you allow me to telephone the High Commissioner for Canada. A trunk call for a murderer? Too expensive. Come along, come along Take now. your hands off me. Hey, stop him. Oh, the idiot. Out the window. After him. <laughs> You get out of this car. Oh, don't tell me it's you again, that stupid girl on the train. Henny, the murderer. Listen, listen, they're after me again. You've got to believe me this time. I didn't do it. Now, you get that through your head, can't you? I didn't do it. And unless I'm kept from the police, a vital secret of this country will be smuggled to a foreign power. Now, start this car and drive me to safety. I will not. All right, then, I will. Now, let me get in that driver's seat. No! Help! Move over, move help! over! Help! 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 What is it, miss? And this man, he's a murderer. This is Richard Hanney. Oh, ho, Hanney. Raise your hand. Oh, you little fool. I suppose you think you've been clever. Are you an officer? Yes, ma'am. Well, will you please tell your prisoner not to insult me? You try and stop me. That's enough, Hanney. You come along with me. Couldn't you realize that I was speaking the truth in that railway carriage and just now? I prefer not to talk to you. All right, all right. But in all frankness, will you put a call through to the High Commissioner for Canada in London and tell him that an enormously important oh, secret... Oh, this do now, An Hanney. enormously important secret is being taken out of this country by a foreign agent. Has that penetrated? Right to the funny bone. Haven't you any sense at all? Put that call through and refer them to me. Will you do this? No. Good night. Well, beg pardon, miss. But I'd like you to come, too. Whatever for? To identify the prisoner formally. 
I'll take you both to the police station in my car. Then I'll drive you back here, miss. Oh, well, all right, if it's absolutely necessary. Let's get it over with. Isn't that the police station on the corner? You're running past it, officer. Tell the driver. The driver knows where he's going. We're not exactly going to the police station, miss. Well, then where are we going? Inverary. Inverary? Yes, this man is to be questioned by the sheriff principal. Well, how far is it to Inverary? Forty miles. Keep quiet, her name. I'm sorry. Well, isn't the man going the wrong way? Surely Inverary is to the left. There's a bridge fallen down on that road, miss. You say you're a policeman? Might I see your badge? You shut your mouth. No, I won't. I want to make a bet with you. I'll bet you haven't got a badge. And I'll lay you 100 to 1 that the man you're taking us to has the top joint of his little finger missing. What about it? You shut your mouth. Ha! I win. Hello? Yes, this is the professor. Yes? You say Hobbs has him. Good. You're sure you saw him taken yourself? Fine. With a girl? Oh, dear me, that's too bad. Why? Well, you great booby, simply because I don't too much mind killing Hannay again, so to speak. But I shall regret very much disposing of an innocent girl. Tell the young lady who your boss really is. You shut your mouth. Yes, I wish he would, too. And, officer, if he doesn't, I hope you gag him. All right. I think he's off his head. All right, all right. Oh, blast it. What are we stopping for, oh, driver? It's a flock of sheep. They're all over the road. Oh, yes, we never get through them. Well, can't we go back the other way? No, I told you the bridge is down. I'll have to get out and scare them off the road. There are too many of them. I'll help you. What about Henny? Oh, don't mind me. I'll fix Henny. Miss, how'd you like to be a special constable? What, what do you mean? Handcuffs. Oh, don't, don't put those things on me. What are you doing? Come on, Henny, hold out your wrist. No. I suppose I must. No, no. Ah, there we are. Oh. Now, miss, as long as you stay, he stays. Come on, Bradfield. Yes, sir. Well, how do you like being handcuffed to me? I'll thank you not to talk to me. You don't think I intend to stay here, do you? Well, you can't get away as long as we're handcuffed. Oh, no? Help! All right, I'm going to keep my hand over your mouth, and you, you may as well not struggle. We're going to run for it. All right, let's go. Come on, run. Run! I think we got away all right. What chance have you got tied to me? Oh, keep that question for your husband. You know, those policemen will get you as soon as it's daylight. They're not policemen. Oh, and when did you find that out? Well, you found it out yourself. I wouldn't have known that was the wrong road. They were taking us to their boss, and heaven help you or me if they ever catch either of us again. Still sticking to your penny novelette spy story. Oh, no. There are 20 million women on this island, and I've got to be handcuffed to you. Now, look here. I'm telling you the truth. I told it to you once on the train and again this evening. Now, I'm telling you for the third time. There's a dangerous conspiracy against England, and we are the only people who can stop it. Please don't tell me that stupid lie ever again. All right, all right. Look, I, look, I'm just a plain common murderer who stabbed an innocent, defenseless woman in the back not four days ago. Now, how do you like that story? I don't know how innocent you may be, but you're a woman, and you're defenseless, and you're alone on a desolate moor in the dark, handcuffed to a murderer who'd stop at nothing to get you off his hands. Now, if that's the situation you prefer, my lovely, have it, and welcome. I'm not afraid of you. For all you know, I may murder one woman a week. So listen to a bit of advice. From now on, do every single thing I tell you to do, and you do it quick. You big bully. <laughs> you know, I like your pluck, but I, I don't like you much. Come on, there's an inn. Well, what of it? We're going in there. Well, what for? That's my business. But we're handcuffed. Come on, shut up, will you? Now, remember what I said. You back me up in every single thing I say or do. Now, has that penetrated your pretty head? Only just. All right. All right come on now, pull yourself together. Put your hand in my pocket. Come oh. on, put it here so they won't oh. see the handcuffs. Come on. Hello? Hello. Oh, come in, Mom. Come in, sir. My, my, 
my. The young lady's terrible wet. Well, we had an accident with our car a few miles back. Oh, then you'll be wanting to stay the night? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. It's just the one room left with the one bed in it. But you'll not mind that. Oh, no, 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 no. Quite the reverse. Your man and wife, I suppose. Oh, yes. Yes. Aren't we, dear? James! Yes. Hey, hey, I'm coming. James! Here's a young couple who wants to register. Aye, aye. Well, here's the book. I'll weigh up and light the fire for you. Will you sign the book, sir? Hmm? Oh, uh, innkeeper. Aye, sir. Uh, could you get us a large whiskey and soda and a few sandwiches? And a glass of milk, please. Hmm. Oh, yes, yes, a glass of milk. Aye, sir. I'll do that while you're signing the book. Good, we got rid of him. I can't write with my left hand, my dear. You take the pen. Come on, go on, take it. The sooner you get used to writing your new name, the better. Mr. and Mrs. Henry Hopkinson. The Hollyhocks, Hammersmith. I tell you, I can't stand this any longer. I'm going downstairs to tell the whole story. Do you think you can drag me with you? Oh. Do you want me to hang for a murder I never committed? Well, so long as they hang you, I really don't care whether you did it or not. Can I come in, sir? Come in, come in. Oh, yes, we were, uh, we were just getting warm here before the fire. I can see that. I thought you might like this hot water bottle to your bed. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You'd like a hot water bottle, wouldn't you, my sweet? Yes, darling. <laughs> well, good night. Oh, I say, please don't go. Why not? Is there anything wrong? You've got to help me. What's the matter? Well, she wants to tell you something, that's all. Now, we, uh, we're, uh... We're a runaway couple. Oh, I knew it all the time. You're so much in love. I could see it. Are they after you? Yes, yes. But you won't give us away, will you? Of course not. A good night to you both. You'll not be disturbed. You try anything like that again and you'll get hurt. All right, you won. Don't rub it in. No, can't we get these handcuffs off? I want to very much. In the morning. Oh, why not now? Because I'm sleeping. Well, I'm not. Well, if, if we got these handcuffs off, I'd have to stay up all night watching you. Mm. Would that be so terrible? No. No, I like watching you. If only I weren't so sleepy. Come along. Come along, I'm going to bed. Well, it's going to be a little difficult, isn't it? No, I don't think so. I'll stretch out. Well, I'm going to sit up. Well, you'll have to sit on the side of the bed. Come along. Come on here. We'll both be comfortable. You're really most inconsiderate. What are you doing with that hairpin? Well, I've heard that you can unlock handcuffs with a hairpin. You're welcome to try. Don't let me disturb you. Go right off to sleep. Good night. This is a hotel. Aye. I suppose you get a few old people this time of the year. Aye. You didn't happen to have anyone tonight, did you? Aye. They weren't by any chance a young couple, were they? Them? Oh, two old maids they was. And stale, too. Oh. Uh, could we have a couple of whiskies and soda? Aye, I'll fetch it from the back room. Uh, have you got a public telephone? Right there, behind you. Oh, thank you. Open the shuttock, 532. Queer place, this. Mm. Hello. Hello, Professor Jordan. No, it hasn't gone well. The girl handed him over to us, thinking we were detectives. We had to take her as well, because he told her everything. They got away. Yes. Yes, I see. I see. You're going where? Well, good luck, Professor. Goodbye. What now? The professor's going to clear out. It's too dangerous with Hannay on the loose. He's warning the whole 39 steps. He'll be able to get the secret out of England. Yes. He's picking up our friend at the London Palladium tomorrow. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, oh. Pamela... Pam, uh, good Lord, she's gone. No, I haven't gone. 
I'm over here by the fireplace. What's the idea? How did we get out of these handcuffs? Well, I told you I'd open them with my hairpin. Why didn't you run away? I did, but just as I was going, I discovered you were speaking the truth. So I decided to stick with you. Well, may I ask what earthquake caused your brain to work at last? When I left the room and went out on the landing last night, those two men were downstairs and I heard them phoning. What did they say? A lot of stuff about the 39 steps. Somebody's going to warn them. How can you warn steps? Go on. Well, somebody called the professor taking the secret out of London. He's picking up someone at the London Palladium today. The London Palladium. I don't know what a theater has to do with it, but come on, we're going to London. You're quite right, madam. It's true, their ministry has a new thing that quite a lot of people are interested in. Well, then, please. But they're positive that no papers are missing about it that would be of any use at all to a spy. But I tell you, I'm quite certain. There's a man leaving the country tonight with something. Since you telephoned from Scotland this morning, we've made the most extensive inquiries. Well, it's obvious that I'm wasting my time here. Uh, Just a moment, please, miss. There is one thing you haven't told us. Where's Richard Henney? I haven't the faintest idea... I see. Well, you're in the telephone book, aren't you? Yes. If anything crops up, we'll give you a ring. Thank you. Goodbye, Commissioner. Goodbye. Henry, get a couple of men and follow that girl. She'll lead us to Henry, all right. I'm glad you've come. Listen, the professor's in that box up there. I've been to Scotland Yard. They've refused to do anything. They say there are no papers missing. I've... Oh, wait a minute. Listen, I've heard that tune before. The music hall. Annabella. Ladies and gentlemen, with your kind attention and permission, I have the honor of presenting to you one of the most remarkable men in the world. Every day he commits to memory 50 new facts. And remembers every one of them. The same little man. I've got it, I've got it. All the information is inside Mr. Memory's head. I don't understand. Don't you see? The papers were borrowed, memorized by Mr. Memory, and then replaced. Oh, yes. Mr. Henney. Thank you. Police. Come along. Please. Oh, the police? Well, well listen. There's, there's something you ought to know. Come quietly. Oh, yes, but that man on the stage... Look here, old man. You don't want to cause trouble and spoil other people's entertainment, do you? Now, then, come quietly. One at a quietly. time, please. One at a time, One question, please. Now, wait a minute, officer. Mr. Memory, Mr. Memory, what are the 39 steps? Come on, answer up. What are the 39 steps? The 39 steps. Answer me. What are the 39 steps? The 39 steps is the name of an organization of spies collecting information on behalf of the foreign office of... The professor, it was the professor fired that shot. Come on. All right. He's oh, still yes, conscious. Sir. We got the man who shot him, sir. Good. All right, Mr. Anna. What was it you wanted to ask him? Uh, Mr. Memory. What was the secret formula the professor had you memorize? Will it be all right, me telling you, sir? Yes, the professor sent me. I'm the man you ought to tell it to. Big job to learn it. Biggest job I ever tackled. Don't want to throw it away. It will be quite all right. The first feature of the new engines, its greatly increased ratio of compression, represented by R1 minus 1 over R to the power of gamma. Angle of 45 degrees. Dimensions of cylinders as follows. This device renders the engine completely silent. Am I right, sir? Quite right, thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm glad. Tickets, please. Um, oh, I have it right here. Let's hmm. see. Um, 
Well, Here we are. going to Scotland, eh? Yes. Holiday? No. Live there? Unfortunately. Well, have a good trip, miss. Thank you. The diner will be open in another hour. Oh, I don't believe I want your dinner. Ticket, please. Well, I just gave my ticket. Richard! May I sit down? Well, of course. What are you doing on this train? I'm going back to Scotland. Holiday? No. Well, you certainly don't live there. No. Richard Hannay, we're not starting this all over again. They're not after you again. No. No, this time I'm not being pursued. Well, what then? This time I'm doing the pursuing. Come here. Oh, Richard. I think I'm going to like Scotland this time. From Studio One at CBS, you have just heard Mr. Glenn Ford starring in Fletcher Markle's production of The 39 Steps by John Buchan. Another of the world's great stories from radio's celebrated playhouse of dramatic entertainment. Tonight's script was prepared by Robert Senadella, and the original musical score was composed by Lana Domian and conducted by Alexander Semler. Now again, Mr. Markle. May a producer identify the principals in tonight's cast. In the foreground... Richard Henney. ...was played, of course, by Mr. Ford, who is currently starred in Columbia Pictures' film comedy, The Mating of Millie. Pamela. ...was played by Kathleen Cordell. Annabella. ...was Mercedes McCambridge. The Croft, that... ...was played by Everett Sloan. The Professor. ...was John Stanley. Arnie. ...was Miriam Wolfe. Mr. Memory. ...was Hedley Rennie. Mr. Hobbs. ...was played by Lauren Gilbert. Frantically active in the supporting cast were Robert Dryden, Neil Fitzgerald, John Merlin, Brainerd Duffield, Alan Devitt, Iba Francis, Mary Michael, and Louis Quinn. The music hall advertisements were performed by Miss Jean Ty. Next week from Studio One, the return to our microphones of a great American novelist and a great American actor. They've been a very fortunate combination before on this series, and we're sure they will be again. Our story is Sinclair Lewis's provocative portrait of a middle-class businessman whose name was Babbitt. And our star is the magnificent and quite irreplaceable Mr. Walter Houston. We hope you'll be with us. And now until next week, until Walter Houston starring in Babbitt by Sinclair Lewis, this is Fletcher Markle with a good night and thank you from all of us in Studio One. <laughs> program you won't want to miss. That's Report Card, the next production of the famed CBS documentary unit. Tomorrow night over many of these stations from 10 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Columbia presents a one-hour inquiry into the state of our nation's schools. Be sure to hear Report Card. This is Lee Vines and this is CBS where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, this is, this is a, about as nice an adaptation uh, in terms of just the overall writing and performance as uh, you'll find. Um, I have to I have to say that uh, it was a great cast. Uh, definitely John Stanley in a little bit of a different role here as the villain. Everett Sloan, always a highlight of the Golden Age uh, performances. And another great name in the cast, even though she was only there for a short while, uh, was uh, Mercedes McCambridge. Uh, we'll eventually hear from Miss McCambridge. She got her own um, detective mystery show uh, called uh, Defense Attorney. Uh, and uh, she always delivers such amazing performances. Orson Welles called her... Um, uh, radio's greatest uh, actress uh, in high praise and uh, the more I am able to listen to her work the more I think Wells definitely was on to something alright uh, well that will do it 
Uh, if you like Lynn Ford, you're going to get more of him starting Tuesday. And for the next three weeks, we will have Glenn Ford with us for the adventures of Christopher London. And we'll be back on Monday with uh, Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator. And then Tuesday, look for the adventures of Christopher London. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Give us a call, 208-991-4783. And uh, become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. But from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.